Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in to my first podcast episode. Yes, cheers all around. This is Sakura Pop, and I am here to bring you the best, the worst, and in depth analysis of present and past Korean dramas and films that have been weighing on my mind. I'm not much of a fan of doing terribly long and perhaps useless self introductions, and I know what you're here for. You're here for Korean dramas and stuff about Korean dramas. So, why don't we fast track all of this and get straight to the goods? The flagship drama that I am going to feature in this. Momentous episode one occasion is called Strangers from Hell. It is also known as Hell is Other People. Here's a summary from Netflix Unpleasant events disturb the life of an aspiring crime fiction writer when he becomes a resident of an apartment building teeming with shady neighbors. Now, you may be like me in that I have the personality of a person who tends to shy away from horror films and dramas in general. I have yet to watch Kingdom, and I have yet to watch A Haunting on Hill House, and I never will, not even to browse episode one out of curiosity. However, Strangers from Hell is not a horror drama. It is categorized as a psychological thriller. If you love just the thought of not really understand exactly what is happening with all of the characters, but you love to piece everything together and you enjoy a roller coaster ride with some thrills and mysteries and a big dose of creepiness, then this is right up your alley. And it's so, so creepy. You just know that there are so many things wrong with the people that our main hapless character are stuck living with. You just can't help wondering what is going to befall our hapless character. Who's going to kill him? How are they going to kill him? And what is that mysterious meat that the landlady keeps in the fridge? All of the weirdos in this drama and the claustrophobic setting is enough on its own, very unsettling. But there is none so unsettling as the main antagonist, played by Lee Tong Wook. Lee Tong Wook, I'm not used to seeing him in this kind of role. I've watched him in uh, in Goblin and in the recent uh, Kumi Ho. And this is just very out of the ordinary for him. That creepy smile, that tendency for him to say really weird, uncomfortable things. And of course, we can't forget the stalking. Man, this guy is a mastermind stalker. It's weird. It is all just mental. You just know he is mental to the max, but he hides so well. And from anyone else's perspective, he's just this really handsome dentist who is completely normal and volunteers to help old people in his spare time. I mean, yeah, all of the other residents living in the dorm are also creepy as hell, and they are never people you ever wish to meet out on the street. But Yi Tong Wook, this guy is a straight up maniac. He's a serial killer, and he's out for blood. So you may be wondering are there gory moments in this show? Yes, I already mentioned the mystery meat, but there is also the one big matter of Yi Tong Wook having this fetish before, uh, right up to um, him murdering the actual target. And it is kind of a sickening thought to behold. So I think you really have to see it for yourself to feel the full impact. But all in all, the gore is not so bad. If I can handle it, then anybody can. Now we've got some very important questions to answer. Let's start with Is it binge worthy? Yes. 
Strangers from Hell is very much binge worthy. I found myself watching up to three episodes per seating and uh, and then after that I need a break because I can't take any more of this horror than what I've already managed to stomach. So you can keep going as far as your nerves will take you. I do want to clarify that this is not a scary drama in the traditional sense. It's um, all kind of happening around the psychology of it and how you would feel if you were placed in the protagonist's shoes. Uh, in fact, I find myself uh, chuckling a few times actually, um, especially when I saw Yi Dong Wook do his like stalker peeping thing right around the corner of a building watching his target intensely. Second important question is to discover the best way to watch this drama so you can experience it in all of its thrilling glory. I recommend after dinner as an evening sit down special without any popcorn because you're going to be too much at the edge of your seat to think about consuming any food while you are watching what is unfolding. What is my final rating? I give it a solid and very positive 4 blossoms out of 5 blossoms. Draw the curtains and keep your, low, keep your lighting levels appropriately dim. It is an exciting, well-acted, well-paced psychological thriller that gets under your skin in just the right way. Two thumbs up! Very soon after I finished watching Strangers from Hell, I was so hooked into this genre of psychological thriller that I needed more. I needed another fix, especially since uh, some uh, romantic dramas have lost their, their luster for me. <clears throat> Start up, we shall be talking about you in another episode. But I did find my next fix, and that is in rewatching an oldie that is uh, still being promoted on Netflix and rightly so. This oldie is Signal. It's won various awards because it is just so superb. It's a police procedural with a twist. There is a time traveling component to it. While all of the plot lines line up together and match so well, the actors are absolutely superb. It's exciting. It's got the right dose of mystery that unravels just when you need it. And out of all the other police procedurals with time traveling components, I'm thinking Tunnel, which is on Netflix, and also in comparison with Life on Mars, which is not on Netflix, I would say Signal totally beats them all to the ground. Now that we've gotten the recommendation bit well out of the way, it's time to head into spoiler alert territory as I get deep down and nitty gritty into all of the episodes that I watched uh, and analyze the most juicy piece of material. One of those juiciest pieces of material come in the form of the ending at the end of episode 10 where Jung Wu, played by Im Shi Won, has become a killer himself. Throughout the course of the drama, you can kind of see Jung Wu losing his sanity. He is unable to cope with the everyday stresses of his current life, but he also is carrying burden from before he moved to Seoul. So back in his hometown, he's got his mom and his brother to take care of. Things are breaking down in every relationship, not doing so well with his girlfriend, and definitely not excelling at work. There are a lot of people he's carrying some very deep-seated inner hatred for, including his boss, his supervisor, and uh, there's some baggage from back in his army days. Then of course, on top of all of that, he's also got those 
weird, creepy mental residence of the dorm that he has to live with and、uh, stay alive from. You've got a recipe for disaster as far as his mental health is concerned. It seems like, to me, everything that's happening at the dorm exacerbates his fragile emotional state. We've got a man here who is being overwhelmed on a daily basis under stresses that he no longer has the resilience to cope with. Given all of those pressures of daily living, given the guilt and the anger that he's carried with him、um, from his past, and、uh, given that he doesn't seem to have any hope for a positive future at all, his desperation levels just rise higher and higher with. Every new conflict and every new problem that he can't solve, that、um, Jung Woo explodes. All of that, like suppressed energy, comes out in the worst ways possible. We see this as early as episode two to three or so, where he can't suppress his emotions. He can't control them,、um, and they are vented out. In a violent manner, he confronts、um, this person who's beating down some other innocent fellow outside of a bar, and he intervenes. But he doesn't intervene like a normal person might intervene. He doesn't just break them up. He punches the guy and almost beats him to death. And you just can't help wondering from that. From those early episodes, that something is going on with Jung Woo, and it's going to keep bubbling to the surface. Now, in the climax of the tenth episode, his girlfriend has been kidnapped. She could be subjected to torturous devices anytime soon by Moon Jo. Jung Woo is at a disadvantage. He is not getting any help from the police. It seems that he can only rely on himself. A bunch of people he's close to have already been killed. We had,、um, you know, his across the hall roommates and his manager. Things are starting to go down, and it's going down the toilet real quick. That pushes Jung Woo to the edge of sanity. He totally loses it. He gives in to Moon Jo, and he ends up. Really being completely controlled by Moon Jo. Moon Jo said, "Hey, you want to save your girlfriend, save the day? You're gonna have to kill everybody else." And Jung Woo gave in to those killer instincts. You could say that Jung Woo was thoroughly provoked by Moon Jo, or that there was no other way to save his girlfriend. But I thoroughly disagree with that perspective. To save somebody does not necessarily mean that you have to single-handedly, with knives in hand, in a very manual and grotesque way, murder no less than four people on your way to saving yourself and somebody you really care about. I'm not trying to say that those those four killers didn't get the ending that they deserved. <laughs> there's there's no chance in hell that they should should have gotten away with、uh, their serial killings, but what Jung Woo did didn't serve himself or society at large. Who knows what's going to happen in the rest of Jung Woo's life from now on? He is completely traumatized and scarred, has no outlets to be able、uh, to. Resolve those pains because nobody knows except him, and、uh, the police lady knows. But they are these two people are probably never going to meet ever again. It's a state of disaster. It is a freight train wreck waiting to happen somewhere down the line. Jung Woo is going to become exactly. What Moon Jo is trying to groom him to be, and that is the brilliance of Moon Jo. This was his master plan. 
he kept uh, urging Zhong Wu to get in touch with his inner emotions so he can be more human, don't suppress things down inside, just do whatever you like to whomever you feel deserves it, whenever you want. And he succeeded. Zhong Wu, he's become a stone cold killer. And who knows if he will kill more later on. That's the mystery that we're left with. There's an observation that I made that I believe is worth discussing. And that is the interactions that Zhong Wu had with the other residents of Eden. What I found is that when things culminated to an altercation, it was Zhong Wu who initiated. Think back, even though the residents were never friendly or comforting, and they certainly aren't the type of folks that you want to get mixed up in, uh, they did not outwardly provoke Zhong Wu. Um, I hesitate to think of even times where they've sweared at him in any way. Um, they were just like generally rude and creepy um, and suspicious people. But one can't help wonder if Zhong Wu kept his cool, wasn't so quick to take offense. Perhaps if he did not engage and if he ignored everyone else the best he could, then would he have still found himself in the same life and death situation? I mean, there are a hundred other things that you can do when you've got conflict with other people and to me Zhong Wu didn't didn't fathom or didn't try any of those hundred other things why didn't he sleep in a PC bung or Jijin bung or overnight at the office sometimes if he was so scared for his life and also wanted to protect his privacy from Eden why didn't he accept help from his manager? Okay, he hated him, but if you think you're going to get killed and you still refrain from reaching out to your support network, few and far in between that may be, then there is a different sort of underlying problem. But that's probably the beauty of Moon Joe's objective and what he's done to his chosen target. He transformed Zhong Wu. Moon Zhou knew Zhong Wu had it in him to be this loner, to be, to be so angry and to have a violent instinct, even though it's buried deep down inside. Moon Zhou simply had to be the person to bring out the worst. And that's it folks. I would love to hear how you felt about the drama and your theories, so please leave me a comment and look forward to future episodes. Thank you very much for listening. This has been Sakura Pop.